This intro to this video that you're watching right now was recorded in the browser using JavaScript. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it. Let's get into it. Woo! Okay, so in this video, we're not going to be starting with any kind of starting files. I'm going to be starting with an empty editor. So if you wanna follow along with me, simply take the steps that I'm taking, follow along, and you'll have the same application working on your machine once this video is done. So to that end, let's make a new folder where we are going to be writing all of our code. So here now in my terminal, I'm navigated on over to coding with Chaim slash projects. I'm making a new directory called record stream. And it's going to be in this folder where we are going to be writing all the code to make this work. So there are only two files that this entire project needs. The first one is going to be an HTML file. And then the other one is going to be a simple JavaScript file where we can actually write the code to make this work. So now I just created my index.html file. And here now I'm creating a file called script.js. And this is where we are going to be writing the actual JavaScript code to get this to work. So here in the HTML file, I've essentially just included some basic uh, markup. What I'm including right now is a simple video tag so that I can actually see my face to make sure that the, you know, the webcam is correctly capturing my face to know that it's working before I actually start recording. Then I've given myself two buttons, one to actually start the recording process, one to then go ahead and stop the recording process. And then finally, we are going to be linking our index.js file, which is of course where we are going to be writing our JavaScript. So here we are now inside of my script.js file. And as you can see, what I'm doing so far is very simple. I'm simply asking the browser to give me access by using the get user media method. I'm asking the browser to give me access to the person's webcam as well as their mic. So in this case, I'm asking for both audio and video. This basically will actually give me a promise so that I'm gonna simply let the promise resolve. And when it does, it's gonna go ahead and call my dot then method. And then what's, what it's going to give me, it's going to be giving me this underlying stream object. This is a media stream. And this is going to be a stream object that's going to be containing two tracks, one for the audio, one for the video. And that's simply because I actually asked the browser to give me both the audio audio as well as the video. Had I only asked for audio or only video, the stream would have only contained one track. And by the way, if you've never actually seen this get user media method getting used, I actually have an entire playlist about WebRTC to sort of, you know, create video chats. And you'll see that getting used a lot in those videos. So I'll leave a link to that playlist down in the description box below. I would recommend you watch it. Those are some really awesome videos. And then simply for practical purposes, this itself, what I'm doing next here, where I'm actually taking the stream and attaching it to my video tag in my HTML file. This has nothing to do with the actual process of letting myself record the stream. That has nothing to do with the actually attaching to the video. I simply did that for practical purposes. Before I start recording something, I just want to make sure that the shot is good. I want to see myself. I want to make sure the lighting is good. The sound sounds okay. So that's the, that's the only reason why I actually did it, where I actually attach it to the video. But for the sake of actually doing the recording, this is totally not necessary. Okay, so here you can now see that on the uh, button that we had inside of my HTML file. So this is the button that, you know, had the start recording text written on it. So that has the ID of BTN. So basically, I'm going to grab that ID. I'm going to attach an event for the on click. And then when that on click event gets raised, we're going to go ahead and call this function here. And then what this function is now doing is it's going to go ahead and instantiate a media recording recorder object. So this is the actual media recorder. The way that this works is it's basically going to give you this constructor called media recorder. And then what it accepts is this argument when you want to go ahead and new it up, we want to go ahead and create an instance of this media recorder, you need to take the stream that you want to record and pass it into the constructor method. So here I'm basically creating this new media recorder instance by calling its constructor, taking this stream, passing it into my constructor uh, function right over here. Finally, once that's done, I now have an instance of a media recorder, which now allows me to go ahead and call its start method, passing in this number. And I'm going to be honest, I'm not entirely sure what this number does. My guess is that the data available um, function will kind of get called for as long as you pass in a number over here, meaning over here, this number, I'm pretty sure is in milliseconds. So my guess is that what it's going to be happening is if you're passing a thousand milliseconds, the on data available event will kind of get raised once every second. And basically what happens is when the event gets raised, your function that you passed it will go ahead and receive this event argument. And on this event argument, you can go ahead and say event dot data, that data will actually represent the underlying data that you're getting back from the media recorder. And so then you can do with that data, whatever you want. So when the on data available event gets raised again, in the side of, inside of this function, we've got this event argument. And here you can see I'm basically doing parts.push, which is this new variable that I just created right up over here. I created an, an empty array called parts. And then basically what I'm doing is I'm pushing in the event.data. So again, as the media recorder starts to record, eventually at some interval, it's going to go ahead and call the on data available event. When the event gets raised, we've got this function which receives the event argument. The event on argument contains the data uh, property, which basically represents the underlying data that we just got out of the stream, which the media recorder is getting out of the stream. We then go ahead and push this into our parts array. And in just a second, we're going to see how we actually use that parts array to, to actually make a file out of it, which we can then download onto our machine. So, so far, that actually is all the code that we need to actually start the recording process. Now we need to start taking all the data that we're getting inside of this parts array and turning it into a file. So that's going to come now. Okay, so when we click on the stop button now, you can see that the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to simply call upon our media recorder, and we're going to go ahead and call upon its stop method. So basically, right away telling it stop recording, we're done with that part. Now we actually have to take all the data that we got back from the media recorder. So again, remember, we have this parts array, which basically kept capturing all the e dot data that we got back from the on data available event, we now need to take all that binary data and actually turn it into a blob, which will then be ready for us to download onto our machines. And so the way that we do that is we basically take the parts array, we use the blob constructor, the blob constructor simply lets us actually create files out of data, we 
take the parts array, that is going to be the first argument that we pass to the blob constructor. The second argument that we pass to the blob constructor is going to be simple options object. We're going to teach it what type of file this is going to be. So we're telling it it's going to be a video of, of type WebM. Now we actually have the underlying blob. This is now some kind of like binary blob that actually holds our file. This is now what we can actually go ahead and download onto our machine. So what we now do is we actually go ahead and call upon the create object URL that's given to us from the URL um, class, I guess. We basically take the blob, pass it in. This gives us a URL. And then here we're very simply going to go ahead and create a, a basic A tag. We're going to append it to our body. We're going to tell the A tag to be hidden. We're going to tell the A tag that is href is going to be the URL that we just created by calling upon this method. The name of the file that you're going to be downloading, which gets specified by a.download, will be called test.webm. And then finally, we call upon the a.click to actually programmatically click on this href that we just created, or rather on this A tag that we just created. And that's going to go ahead and kick off the download process. So again, the file that we now have, we just when we took the parts array that kept getting populated from the on data available event, this has the, all the underlying binary data. We take that we take that array, pass it to the blob constructor, turning it into some kind of blob file, which we then can create a URL out of. We take the URL, pass it to the A tag, and then the A tag, when it gets clicked, will actually download it onto our machine. And then we can literally open that file in our browser and actually start to view the video that we just recorded. So let's actually go and do that right now. Okay, so to actually run this application, I simply go into my terminal. I call upon the HTTP hyphen server. Basically, this is just a static server. I installed it by using npmi g HTTP hyphen server. But you can use any other server that you want. It doesn't really matter. And then we're going to simply hit enter, and this will bring up our application on localhost 8080. I'll then open my browser, go to localhost 8080, and see whether or not this does in fact work. So one silly mistake that I did just notice that I made here in my HTML file, I was referencing a file called index.js. It should really be called script.js. Okay, so so far you can see that we're not recording just yet, but we can already see my face. It's the video is already playing, so we've we've successfully been able to get the stream. I can now kind of frame itself up, see that everything looks right, and I'm ready to start recording. Once I'm ready to start recording, this actual button here will actually start that process. Nothing's going to happen. I didn't really code anything to kind of give me a visual cue the recording process has really started. But the cool thing is now once I actually hit stop recording, we can now see that the file is actually starting to download. And here it is now at the bottom here on the left hand side of my screen, you can see that the file has actually downloaded. So let's now open up another tab and let's simply pull that file in and see whether or not we can actually see the video that we just recorded in JavaScript in the browser. And there you go. You can now see that the video is in fact playing. And this is something that we literally just recorded right now using JavaScript in the browser. Well, anyways, that does it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found these useful. If you did, please drop a like. It really helps the channel and I'll catch you in the next one. Woo!